folks, the inaugural episode of the 2013 IU Volleyball season. It's Inside IU Volleyball. You might be wondering who I am. I'm Jimmy Cavanaugh, joining Coach Sherry Dunbar. Stepping in for Greg Murray, who did this job last year. He's now with the Binghamton Mets. Uh -huh. He's moved on to bigger things, to different, more East Coast things. Maybe not bigger. I think IU Volleyball is huge. I think so, too. <laughs> especially compared to a minor league baseball team out in Binghamton, New York. But regardless, I'm happy to be here, Coach. First time I've been in the office on camera. So it's a big moment for both of us, I'd imagine, as the season's getting ready to get started. Yeah, uh, welcome, first of all. We're always excited. We have had uh, the best announcers in the past and, and the radio. And, you know, I think it was my second year when we got here, we always tried to update things every year and doing radio was a, a big deal. And then starting the coaches show and all those type of things. And I think it has given our our fans such a, a inside look at, at our program. And I think the radio has, has just helped us so much to have so many people that live so far away that are able to listen to it and actually feel what university gyms like, you know, especially in our home court. Uh, and to, to kind of be, you, you be their eyes, you know, for them. And I think it's been wonderful. Yeah, there's a lot to live up to as far as that went. Dave Leno was outstanding. Yeah. Cody Sher very good. Mm -hmm. Greg last year did an outstanding job. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to step in, do the best uh, I good can. He got a good tie on to start, oh. the, to start the day. So it's, the IU tie, he's, he's trying. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to pick up right to mm -hmm. on where you and Greg left off last year. You talked about some high points that the season had, mm -hmm. and you talked about trying to develop more consistency as the year went along. How have you gone about trying to establish that as a tone in the off season to roll into the regular season? Well, I think first of all, we had one of our best off seasons, probably our best off season in, you know, this is my seventh year, starting my seventh year. And so in those six off seasons, this was by far our best one. So I think we revamped after two, not two years that weren't successful in our eyes, you know, and, and in anyone's eyes, uh, our job is to be competitive in the Big Ten and get in the NCAA tournament every year. And we weren't able to do that. And you can look at it and say, oh, we had injuries and we had graduations of All-Americans and things like that. But in the end, you're still supposed to reload, have the depth to be able to be competitive at this level. And so I think we really looked at our recruiting and we looked at um, our training and all those type of things. And, and we did some things different. So instead of 13 or 14 players, we have 17 players this year. Now, uh, Mariah Coleman, unfortunately, uh, tore her ACL in the spring, so she'll be out most of the season this year. Uh, but she can still train a little bit and practice and everything. So we have 16 healthy players that are able to go. And so that gives us depth and healthy competition in practice and in matches. So if someone's not playing well, we can insert someone else. If someone's not uh, putting out the effort that we want to, then there's someone right behind them that's able to do that. And we haven't been able to do that in the past. So I think that will help with the consistency. That will help with injuries and things that we know always happen at this level you know you can count on you're going to have one or two injuries hopefully they're not long-term injuries but they might keep them out for a few matches you know so i think we've tried to address the deficiencies we've had and i think we as a staff and as a program have done a pretty good job of that now we have to put it out on the court and see how it how it plays out uh, you mentioned the depth the depth mm -hmm. is huge leadership also huge mm -hmm. four seniors on this team Jordan Haverly, Melanie Hicks, Caitlin Hanson, and Jade Henderson. Mm -hmm. But you talked about off-camera a little bit, mm -hmm. some additional things you guys have gone about trying to build and instill leadership in this team. Can you touch on those a little bit? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we always have captains. Pretty much every team does. But I think we try to really uh, promote within our program that everyone needs to be a leader. Whether you're a freshman or you're a senior, uh, we want them doing some leadership skills and, and developing that. So whether they're a captain or not, that's a great honor, but they need to be a leader in their own form, whether that's just by being an example or, or academically, they're doing some very good things and, and helping other people. So it's all about those type of things. So um, we have, we've worked really closely with the ROTC in the past years, Mike Ogden, who's just a wonderful person. And it's, it's eerie how similar, really, when you look at the military and the things they do and their leadership and, and how they work as a team and their goals and is very similar to athletics. And it's been a great partnership with all of Indiana Athletics and working with the ROTC. So uh, the way they do things is by leadership committee. And so we have two captains this year, which we're very excited about, Jade Henderson and Caitlin Hansen, who earned that right. And uh, the players voted, and, and I think it's a, it's a very good choice. But I also think Melanie Hicks and Jordan Haverly have done a fantastic job and are leaders in their own right, and the team feels that way too. And we also wanted to groom a couple of players from that sophomore and junior class to kind of move into those shoes. 
So we have, you know, Jade and Kate as captains, and then we have a leadership committee comprised of Jordan and Melanie, and then Katie Gallagher, who's a sophomore, and Morgan Leach, who's a junior, that we feel have some very good leadership abilities and that we want to groom into that. So they'll have very specific responsibilities that cater to what they're good at and that can help the team uh, be better. Sounds like it's a good place to mm -hmm. be with a lot of people mm -hmm. hoisting some responsibility. I agree. I think that's good. It shouldn't fall on one or two people. It should fall on a group of people, you know, and spread it out a little bit, and I think that's helpful. And I think what we want to try to do is, is make Jade and Kate really focused on our mission and the big picture of where we want to go, the tournament, and let other people kind of focus in on things we need to get done and, and understand that they're part of that mission, too, and how can they help us. And one of the big focuses, too, with the leaders would seem to be integrating the new faces. Absolutely. And that had a lot to do with this next point that I want to get to. We talked about you know, off-air a little bit the scrimmage this mm -hmm. past Saturday. A, there were a ton of people there. Yeah. B, the athleticism and explosiveness was really something to behold. If you didn't make it out, you missed a treat because there was a lot of high-level play there just trying to integrate those individual players and talking about what they can bring to this team. Well, I think that's the challenge of the coaching staff is trying to figure out how to fit the people, you know, the puzzle pieces in the puzzle and make it the chemistry right, the athletic ability right, the type of, type of lineup we want to put in fit the right way um, because we're going to be a little bit non-traditional this year in, in trying to do some different type of things because we do have so many good athletes and we want to try to fit them in the right places. So, yeah, the scrimmage was, was fantastic, first of all, because our fans came out, and we've always had a good base of loyal fans, and we get a lot of families and a lot of kids. And the kids stayed for over an hour after the scrimmage, just signing autographs, signing shirts, signing faces, whatever they wanted, we signed, you know? And it was so fun, and all of them were so excited about our players, and they should be. They're great role models, but, and we're going to come back. We're coming back this weekend for the opening tournament and all this type of thing. But I thought it was a great scrimmage because we've been doing that in practice every third day. Put the jerseys on, get them to feel that pressure of playing in that jersey and scrimmaging against each other because I think that was a problem in the past, that anxiety and fear and all those type of things. So get them comfortable in that. Get them comfortable competing with that jersey on. So. I think that's helped us a great deal, and just playing in front of that many fans at our Cream and Crimson scrimmage, I think, gave them a feel of a game. And it was a good competition, you know, and so I think that helped us that day. It was that, I'll tell you that much right now. I was excited to see that high level of play, and I'm looking forward to seeing it this weekend. You yeah. start up this Friday. Mm -hmm. Another positive about last year was how strongly you started, and you have that opportunity this weekend. Robert Morris, Kent State, and Rutgers all this weekend, Friday and Saturday at the U Gym. Just talk about getting ready to play somebody else, another jersey that these kids get to go out and see. Yeah, we've tried to prepare our kids earlier than ever um, for these teams. You know, not that we have film on them and all those type of things, but just studying who Robert Morris is. They're picked second in their conference. They've been to the tournament the last 14 years. You know, they know how to win. And so understanding the type of teams we're going to play and then we'll get to see their style as the tournament goes along and things like that. The only one we won't get to see is Robert Morris because they're the first match we play. Um, but after that, then we'll not only understand them on paper, but understand them on the court. You know, So I think our kids have a really good idea that um, in how seriously we're going to take every single team this preseason because in order for us to reach that goal of getting to the tournament, we have to have a great preseason. And we have no one we can look over in our preseason. I mean, every team that's coming – to our two tournaments, you know, Rutgers in the second tournament, you know, that's joining the Big Ten and UAB and all these teams that have great winning traditions, we're going to have to be ready for them. And so we've really tried to mentally prepare our kids, even though we haven't played a match yet, for what is in store and what we have to accomplish this preseason. And we'll get the first look at that this Friday. IU takes on Robert Morris at the U Gym a Friday evening. Hope to see you out there then, and if you see either I or Coach, I'm sure we'd be pleased to say hi at some point during the evening. Uh, I guess that's all the time we have, Coach. It was a good first run, and Absolutely. look forward to several of these throughout the season. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. For Coach Sherry Dunbar, I'm Jimmy Cavanaugh saying good night. Travel well, folks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>